Hello, um, so today's topic is going to be the most important component when it comes to studying mathematics. Um, I made a video about solutions to mathematics textbooks, so it is only fair that I also make a video about the exercises, also known as problems. So this is the most important component when it comes to mathematics, regardless you have a teacher or not. Um, it is often said that mathematics is not a spectator sport. You must participate in order to gain anything out of the learning experience at all. Um, so here I have three textbooks. The first one is called um, Topology by James Moncrees. This is a legendary topology book, highly recommended. And the second is once again, Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Walter Rudin, colloquially known as Baby Rudin. And this is a textbook that is so famous uh, that it got its own nickname. It has been featured twice already on this channel, um, and I guarantee you there will be many more times to come. And the last one is called Partial Differential Equations of Mathematical Physics, written by the Soviet mathematician Sergei Sovolev. The reason I picked these three books is that I wanted to show how different authors handle exercises. So uh, the first book, Topology by Moncrease. This is the first thing one needs to do when first receiving a math book. The burning question is, where are the exercises? Yeah, it's right here. So page 14, we have um, 10 exercises for the first section. Um, this, is, this chapter is about set theory and logic. And uh, for section one, as we can see, the exercises are all about manipulating sets. A lot of math books put their exercises at the end of each section. And um, for Rudin's book on analysis, let's take a look at, uh, for example, the first chapter. Um, so this section is called the Euclidean space. As you can see, at the end of each section, there are no exercises. The exercises are all at the end of every chapter here. Right. And here's the next chapter. So, um, so there are also a lot of books that arrange exercises the same way that Rudin does. The exercise being at the end of each chapter. Okay, so now let's take a look at the uh, book by uh, Sobolev. Unfortunately, there are math books out there that do not contain any explicit exercises at all. So for example, um, as we can see, uh, these are the main text. And at the end of the third section, so to say, um, the the fourth section just starts right after. There is no exercises. The book is organized in the form of lectures. So unfortunately, this book by Sobolev um, does not contain any explicit exercises at all. So that begs the question of why even reading a book like this? Because Sergei Sobolev um, was one of the leading experts on PDE. So the stuff he wrote contains great insights on the subject that regular textbook just won't have. Sergei Sobolev defined the so-called Sobolev spaces, which is kind of an abstract function spaces used in functional analysis. And it turns out to be the correct setting of solving um, many PDEs. So that's why such books are also worth reading, even though um, they're not as user-friendly as, uh, for example, Moncrief's book. Um, so in the first book, uh, Topology by Moncrease, every exercise is at the end of each section. This, in my opinion, is the most user-friendly way of organizing exercises because you will know which exercise is relevant to which section. This makes uh, cross-referencing particularly easy. And let's look at the questions. So before you even read the actual text, um, take a look at the exercise and see what you need in order to solve them. So the idea is to read backwards. We look at the exercise and find out key phrases that showed up in the text, because this tells you that the author thinks a particular concept is important enough for you to actually work it out yourself. So um, exercise one, check the distributive laws for union and intersection and the Morgan's law. Let's try to find in the main text where these laws are stated. So let's go back. So this is typical for reading a dense book like this. This is called inspectional reading. We look at the tasks, we look at the exercise, the problems, whatever, and see what we need to solve them. Um, 
So here it says distributive law and De Morgan's law. So we have these two, these three laws written here. And in case you you cannot find the keywords quickly, you can always go back to the index. It's what it's for. Right? So for you to quickly reference a particular important concept. Right, so here we have the distributive law and the Morgan's law. So let's follow the author's advice and check these are actually true. So immediately go to your notebook or worksheet, write these down. So let's say something like check distributive law, which is A union B intersect C. equals to A union B together intersect with A union C. So this is the uh, relation we were asked to check. And you do the same for De Morgan, right? This is distributive law and you can then write De Morgan, okay? Same idea. Okay, and, and then what we need to figure out is in order to check these relations, right? The, whatever the question asks you to do, uh, what are the related concepts? For example, we see this union symbol, this intersection symbol, and this equal symbol. And for De Morgan's law, we also have the minus symbol, right? So we need to go back further and find out what exactly those operations mean. Right? So look further back, we see A minus B. This is the difference of two sets and is defined as the collection of object X such that X is in A, but is not in B. We know the meaning of the symbol minus. And then you do the same for uh, union and intersection. We have intersection here. So copy that down to the workbook. Right? That's the idea. So this is union. So now we have these uh, definitions at our disposal. Now, these are the tools to solve exercises. Typically, um, the two most powerful tools for solving exercises are theorems and definitions. And also, because in order to check two sets are equal, we also need a definition for equal. And, and look a little bit further, um, we can see that if A equals B, it is true that both A is containing B and B is containing A. So this is how math books are supposed to be read. That is, uh, we look for problems to be solved and see what tools we need to solve them. And then we rinse and repeat until you absorb the content of the material. But sometimes definition and theorems alone are not enough to solve the question, which is also pretty typical. Then we need to look at specific examples, so to say. Um, I mean, this first section is probably too basic to include any uh, non-trivial examples, but I guarantee um, there will be more examples in the future section, especially when the concepts gets more and more abstract. Right? See, we have the example. So the examples are given in order to illustrate particular concepts. So if you manage to find the definition, uh, but you cannot apply it yourself to solve the problem, or you may simply do not understand the definition, the examples are there to help. So the point is, math books in general are almost never meant to be read linearly because all these definitions and theorems um, are the results of very long effort of mathematicians trying to distill the essential concept, right? So um, it is highly unlikely that when reading it just linearly, you would understand what is going on. And chances are there will be subtleties missed during a first linear reading. Because imagine trying to, first, for example, read the first section linearly. So at which page do we reach the exercise? This is page three. And the exercise is in, still no exercise. Actually, exercise is uh, here. No, still not. I think it's page 16, remember. Yeah, right here. So you have to read straight for uh, 11 pages in order to do the exercise. There are so many terminologies being introduced and you can hardly remember um, each one of them. Right? So that's why we do not read math books linearly. Okay, so this is um, the best um, organization, in my opinion, most learner-friendly organization. Um, exercises are listed 
at the back of each section. So what do you do with a book like this? Out of a text like this is essentially create your own exercise. Okay, what does that mean? So often in math books, there won't be full justification for every single detail. Uh, very rarely it is the case especially for high level books like this one. Um, that, that means there are gaps of reasonings that the author intentionally leave so you can fill in the details yourself. Um, the more details we can fill up, the more we can learn. And so in this case, you actually have to do a first linear reading. Now be on the lookout of potential gaps of reasoning because sometimes often the, oh, the author says, it is left as an exercise for the reader. And also, um, it is obvious, it is trivial, it's almost a meme in, in the mathematics community. But these are left there for a reason, because um, if the author does everything for you, um, there won't be much uh, left in the reader's brain after he's done with reading. So here, let's see. Uh, um, I see something here. The analogous lemma for a two-dimensional region lying in a plane can be proved in a similar way. So here, that means the author deliberately left something unproved. Maybe the author proved a general case in, for example, in higher dimension, uh, and some other results can also be proved in a similar way. So this is an excellent opportunity for you to go back to the previous lemma and see how the original proves can be modified and adapt to this new setting that the author promised. This is how you can create your own exercises. So yeah, that's the end of today's video. Um, let me know what you think, how you handle exercises. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.